Hey guys, welcome to Lingua Marina. I hope you like my new setup. I keep experimenting with my studio and my looks. Today we're gonna talk about a phrase, oh my god. Oh my god is a phrase that is used everywhere by native speakers, especially, and it's in my opinion, I haven't analyzed that statistically, but a lot of young women use it all the time. And uh, oh my god is this phrase um, that most of all means surprise. And sometimes it can be a pleasant surprise, like, oh my god, Marina, you look so beautiful today. I am I am surprised you look so beautiful. <laughs> On the other hand, it can be a negative surprise. Oh my god, I forgot I have my TOEFL test tomorrow. Oh my god. And you're like, oh, what a shocking surprise. The purpose of this video is to replace oh my god in your speech and also um, make you acquainted with other uh, phrases that people use because there are a lot of phrases that resemble this phrase and uh, they mean the same, but you might not recognize them straight away. So today we're going to talk about those phrases and hopefully you would be able to use them when you're talking to native speakers, when you're in an English speaking country, because using them would definitely make your sound more like a native speaker and people would understand that you understand their culture. And again, there is nothing bad at sounding like you're a non-native speaker, but still like knowing those phrases, knowing those tricks is something really important. So let's do it. Let's dive deep into replacing oh my God in your speech. First of all, OMG. Uh, whenever you see this abbreviation, OMG means oh my God. <laughs> OMG, OMG. And people use it a lot when texting each other. And uh, sometimes if you watch a lot of YouTube, I see a lot of those thumbnails where people like, and the thumbnail says, OMG. Uh, this means, oh my God. And you can also say, OMG, OMG, I got this job. I got a job offer. OMG, I never text you back. Phrase number two, oh gosh. So the first time I heard the word gosh was actually in the UK. And I think in the UK, people use gosh a little more often than in the US, but I might be wrong since I haven't been to the UK for a while now. But this phrase, oh gosh, gosh, means again the same. Oh my God. Oh gosh, I forgot to lock the door. Oh my gosh, I just got chills. Yes, I know. <laughs> and uh, it's good to use this phrase in conversational English. And uh, by the way, yeah, this phrase is really conversational. So if you're writing an academic essay and you'll be, OMG, I just found out this, this and that. No, don't do it. This is not academic. Goodness gracious me. Um, again, kind of British, but also American phrase. And it can mean a pleasant surprise or unpleasant surprise. For example, if you say, goodness gracious me, this costs a hundred dollars. No way. This is an unpleasant surprise. How can this cost a hundred dollars? Like, I don't know, whatever it can cost a hundred. This mug overpriced. It doesn't cost a hundred coffee time. And goodness gracious me can again be an exclamation of surprise, frustration or excitement. Goodness gracious. Oh my goodness. Another phrase that can be both good and bad. Oh my goodness, it's 11 p.m. already. I would never be able to finish this work. This is an unpleasant surprise. You did not expect it to be 11 p.m. already. Oh my goodness. Or you can say, oh my goodness, this kitten is so cute. Pleasant surprise. I did not expect this kitten to be so cute. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my, just a shorter version. Oh my, what happened here? And it's, you're coming into a room that is so messy. You're like, oh my. Oh my! Holy moly! Very informal phrase. Again, means the same. Holy moly, you look beautiful today. Or, holy moly, you look weird today. Holy moly! And uh, the task right now is for you to uh, listen carefully to this video. And if there are some phrases that you particularly like, like holy moly, you can say anything about this video using this phrase like, holy moly, Marina, your setup is amazing today. Or holy moly, Marina, I like your hair. So I don't know if it's falling down, but I, I watched this video, which is like a two minute video on how to create this hair cell. And I think it's great, <clears throat> but I think it was supposed, I was supposed to put more hairspray on because I think it's falling, but I think it's so beautiful. Anyways, you can say, holy moly, or, oh my goodness, Marina, you look amazing. Like, or, oh my goodness, Marina, this is so boring. I knew everything before even watching this video. So whatever you want to say about this video, I won't be offended. I want you to use this phrase in the comments below and uh, you would be first practicing it and second, memorizing it better because once we use phrases, we memorize them better. The next phrase, holy crap. 
Uh, if you don't know what crab means, it means poop. And we'll have a picture here for you. Uh, so, holy crap. If you just look at this phrase, you would think it probably means something bad. It doesn't necessarily mean something bad. Again, you can say, holy crap, what a beautiful dress. Uh, or holy crap, I forgot my phone again. So it can be both, depending on the context. You always look for cues in the context to decide whether it's a pleasant or unpleasant surprise. Holy crap. Or you can say, holy crap. He was broke six months ago and now he's a millionaire. I don't know whether it's a pleasant or unpleasant surprise depending on the situation. Uh, but yeah, and you can also say holy cow. Holy cow is a phrase that you can also use. Same as holy crap. Holy cow. Oh man or oh boy. Again, depending on your intonation, it could either mean frustration. Oh boy, here he comes again. Oh man, you've ruined everything. Like, this is unpleasant, this is frustration. Oh, man. Oh, boy. Or you can say, oh, man, this is awesome. I love it. Completely different emotion, same phrase. Oh, man, this is amazing, man. For heaven's sake. Now, here, we mostly use this phrase when we're annoyed with someone or something. For heaven's sake, make a decision already. I'm tired of waiting. Oh, for heaven's sake. And you can also use for goodness sake, uh, which would again mean the same. You are frustrated by someone. Wait, oh, goodness sake. When you want to express concern or disapproval, you can say, oh dear, oh dear, don't tell me you ate the whole cake again. This means disapproval. Mm, don't eat too much sugar. Oh dear. Good Lord or oh Lord. Good Lord or oh Lord. These phrases are used to, again, um, mostly express negative emotions. Like, oh Lord, when would this end? Or good Lord, when would this end? Good Lord. Gosh almighty. Gosh almighty is a phrase that is used when we're frustrated, excited and surprised, just like, oh my God. Gosh almighty, I didn't expect this to happen. That was it for me for today, guys. As always, if you're looking to improve your vocabulary, if you're learning English and you're not yet subscribed to this channel, I don't know, like this would be top three mistakes that you make in your English language if you're not yet subscribed. The red button is down below. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to reading your comments using one of the exclamations that we used today. And um, if you want to learn more English with me, I have a workbook over 180 pages of content in English with exercises, with practical things that you you can do with idioms with 1000 words that you need to know in English with tables about tenses with like there are so many things in that workbook and this is something that will be on your desk with you for a while because whenever you feel the urge to learn English language you will like open this workbook and complete a couple of exercises or read something exciting so the link is down below download the workbook and again thank you so much for watching this video I will see you very soon in my next videos bye bye